Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Bluewood Gaming, and we are back here in some more of Dark Souls 3, the DLC. This will be uh, one of the last videos that I have on this DLC, because we are actually almost finished. Uh, now, in all of my videos for this DLC, I've called this a 100% playthrough. And going around, I picked up pretty much everything that I saw and tried to get as much as possible, but I did leave a few things behind that I didn't happen to pick up. So that's what this going, to, this video is going to be. I'm going to be stitching together this video of just uh, showing me going around picking up all the items that I happen to miss throughout the uh, entirety of this DLC. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first item that we have here is... Uh, one of, if not the best, PvP weapon to come out of this DLC, that is the Follower Saber. So, essentially where I'm at right now is, well, besides missing that, damn. Uh, we're right here at the bottom of the uh, bridge ladder. So, yeah, you just follow that, then you come down here, and it is kind of halfway down these vines. A little bit more than halfway. Jeez. The follower set is something that I'm not going to be showing all of, probably. Because that's the only item that you can't, uh, you can't actually get by just picking stuff up. So, uh, it's actually really close to right here. Um, you will see it is... Uh, the branch right up where that guy is, kind of. It's actually right there, right above where my head is. Uh, so the way to get it is right up over here. Then you jump down right there. And there's the follower saber. Uh, I will be showing off all the items at the end of this video. So, yeah, let's just move on to the next item. Okay, so on to the next thing that uh, we need to pick up. Um, yes, I am actually using the Follower Saber right now. It's pretty much just another straight sword. Uh, this is a whole area that I kind of miss. Now, we are here at the, uh, at the Chapel Bonfire. That's where the boss is, down there. <coughs> uh, still slightly sick, because I record most of these videos in one day. But, uh, going back down into the basement where all these flies are, um, coming down here, uh, running all the way across, uh, I already killed mostly everything here. Uh, so... Over there, right above where my head is, is where you would come into this place. Over here was the first invisible wall. You actually had to hit it to open it up. Uh, then coming downstairs, turns out that there was a second invisible wall that I completely didn't know about. That I should have known about because it's quite obvious when you look at it. Um, right here. So just walking down the stairs, staying on the right side. There's even stairs here up to it. You just hit that. There's two crystal lizards in here. Just kill them both. And then we go outside and we can actually climb down some more uh, some more branches and roots. So let's actually see like what's over here and everything. And there's actually like a whole uh, thing over there and there's supposedly several items down there. Um, yeah, so let's, let's make our way down there. Probably should have brought the cat ring for this. <coughs> oh, 
Oh, jeez. Okay, so I don't think that there's anything on these branches going down. Unless this might be something. Oh. Okay. So we can get back up. Okay. I got scared there for a second that we wouldn't be able to get, uh, get back up on these branches. But if there is something up on these branches, then I guess I'll just cut to it again. Alright, then there's our first item. And you know what this is actually reminding me of right now? This is reminding me of the Priscilla boss fight room. Okay, so there's the Pyromancer's Parting Flame, which is the, uh new version of the uh, Pyromancer's Flame and then some Homeward Bones okay and my character didn't even I didn't even tell my character to do that uh, then the thing is apparently there's a fight here Livid Pyromancer Dunnel Jeez, dude, just rolling around. Oh, jeez. Please tell me that that's the new Pyromancy. <coughs> this dude's not really that... that dangerous. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They messed this. Jeez. Chaos Flame. That's actually something that not enough people use, the Chaos Flame. Can you stop with that shit, dude? Really? Oh, he's out now. Okay, there we go. And then we get the floating chaos. I don't know if we can actually go up anywhere. Because from what I know, it's only these two things that we can that we can get here. The question is, how do we get down? Because I have... I have no idea how to get down. Actually, can we just jump off like before? Yeah, that's probably a good thing not to. You know what? Screw it, let's try this. Yep, that didn't work. Okay, so on to the next item. Okay, so here we are actually for the final item. Uh, this is the sh a shield that I actually happen to miss in this tower that I hate quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, it's the shield of the big guys, and it's like Ethereal Oak Shield, I believe is the name of it. Um, but these Milkwood Knights is, are the people who carry that shield. So, I'm just gonna run past them. Just because I don't really want to deal with this. Yeah, see, that shield that he's using right there is the Ethereal Oak Shield. And I'm just going right on past this. There it is, right there, actually. <laughs> yep, 
there we go. So now I'm going to uh, go back, get kind of everything uh, organized, and then I will be showing off all of the items in the DLC. So here we are now back in Firelink Shrine, and I now have every single item except for one actually from the DLC. The only item that I don't have is the one that you have to uh, soul transport the uh, in a new game plus. I don't have that weapon, but I have all the other weapons, so let's just go through right now uh, what they actually look like. Uh, starting with the shields, I do have my basic stuff in here, so you will see that, but uh, two shields in the game. The basic follower shield, as you can see, looks kind of okay. A realistic wooden shield, I would say. Um, then the one that we just picked up, the th ethereal oak shield, a bit more wear on it. I would have liked that to be a bit more pristine, but uh, both of uh, I I'm actually okay with the ethereal oak shield. Doesn't protect uh, as much in magic and fire as I would like, but it's lightning and dark resistance is fine. Uh, follower shield is something that I would definitely just not use, uh, because every shield that I use, uh, one of my requirements for it is that it has 100% physical, uh, resistance, and as you can see, for the shield that I use normally, uh, it has that 100% physical resistance, and it has some of the better stats that you see normally in PvP. Now, if people start going to, like, lightning and dark builds, then this ethereal oak shield could be okay. Um... Moving on, let's actually go into some of the weapons, starting out with uh, Valor Heart. Uh, this one, as you can see, it's like the Roman Gladius, I believe it's called. Uh, it's just the short sword that uh, the Romans would use in their fighting. So basic short sword, uh, attack animations when it's one-handed, but when we two-hand it, you actually get the shield... And then you get this cool kind of uh, hitting with both the shield and the sword uh, together. Then uh, the heavy attack is just another thrust. And then when you go and use the... Uh, this is the stance that you can go into by holding down the, uh, the left trigger. And with this... You poke, you can, uh, you just do a poke or you do a, uh, shield bash. But, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty decent. I might have to see how it's, uh, how it does when it's like this, doing that attack. If that does enough damage, then I might use it. Um, one thing that I don't like, though, is the shield does not have 100% physical resistance, uh, the thing, though, is if it did, then it would be overpowered, so... Yep, just moving on to the next one, Onyxblade, the one of only three weapons that I can actually use. Um, so, yep, uh, normal greatsword moveset. Uh, its special thing is that uh, when you're two-handing it and you press the uh, weapon art button, if you have the right stats for it, it will uh, uh, imbue the blade with dark, so you do extra damage. So that's that's pretty decent to have a uh, kind of a weapon buff built into your weapon that you can use when you need it. Um, moving on, we have actually something that I've already brought up to pretty high levels. This is the Follower Saber. Basic short sword uh, moveset. The thing that I... Uh, noticed right off of the bat is it's uh, charged one-handed L2, well R2, uh, doesn't have you do a full uh, twist. Like, here I'll show it again. Your dude's body twists halfway. Now if I was to switch to, say, the, def the Dark Sword, which... It, it'll turn into the Dark Sword here in a second. Okay, there we go. Uh, using this one, as you can see, it does the full twist. But that's 
just a really small thing. The thing that uh, is so amazing with this one is when you two-hand it, this is the weapon art. And all of those deal regular R1 attack damage. So, if you hit somebody with all of those, that is four hits in very rapid succession that you can... Uh, that you can add on to with more swings when you're finished. So, yeah, uh, pretty good in PvP so far. Uh, moving on, we have the Crow Quills. Uh, well, the... yeah, the Crow Quills. I feel weird saying that. Uh, something to notice is that uh, when you two-hand it, uh, when you're holding that in your hand, you're actually holding four blades. It's not just like an actual fist weapon, you're holding four individual blades in between your fingers. Now let me just sit down to get my... to get my MP back. But, uh, it's special ability. You throw some, uh, you throw some darts. Now, uh, this is actually pretty decent for the people that already use, uh, thrust weapons. Because, uh, most of the time they have to finish off a fight by doing, uh, by actually throwing, uh, darts or something. And now they have that built into a weapon. And, uh, the L1 that you're seeing me use right now is not that bad. So now let's move on to the next one, just the Milkwood Battle Axe. Pretty bad, actually. Uh, it's weapon art is absolutely terrible, and I think that that's what kills this weapon. Because it does the basic roar, but you run towards your opponent to do the roar, and I think that that is the uh, downside to it. Although, now you do get a more powerful attack like that. So, moving on to the next one, we have Earthseeker, which I can't use properly. Uh, I do actually like Great Axes, my most... Uh, my best PvP character is actually use a Great Axe, and you've seen him multiple times, but this is pretty much just the basic moveset of a Great Hammer. Well, Great Axe. And the uh, weapon art on this one, when you throw, when you thrust it into the ground, it actually causes like an earthquake that deals some uh, okay damage uh, if your opponent's stupid enough to get caught in. I don't think that this will replace the weapon that's already on my other character though. Uh, moving on, the quake hammer, uh, which is a great hammer, yeah, uh, great hammer. Pretty typical Great Hammer move set. Uh, I actually might try that out on this character uh, because if you can hit somebody with its weapon art, it actually does quite a bit of damage. Uh, and I, I kind of like this one. I just have to test with it some more, and uh, I think that this character could use it. Uh, moving on, we have the Follower's Javelin. Okay, there we go. Now it's the Follower's Javelin. Uh, just basic spear. Seems to be a little shorter. Uh, I actually haven't tested out the... Oh, it throws it. That's not that bad. I don't know. That, that could be like a way to catch your opponent off guard. By throwing it. I wonder how the damage is on the throw. If the damage is like a is like an R1 or similar, then it might be pretty decent. But uh, I don't know. That does leave you pretty defenseless for a while. So uh, I'd have to see some more of that. Uh, moving on, we have the great sight that I've already shown off. I actually I already said that I really like this weapon. Uh, the thing that this 
uh, that this site does that a lot of the other sites don't do is this one actually like attacks somewhat fast. Like those are those are that was three attacks. That's a pretty wide sweep. So it's gonna hit most anybody in front of me. And I don't know, I just like that this one swings faster than all the other ones. And then you've seen this weapon art, it's just... If you get caught in that, I'm expecting it to do a lot of damage. So, yeah, I, I really like this scythe, and I actually might change this character around a little bit, if it's uh, good enough. Uh, next, we have the Crotowns. Uh... I've seen this weapon, uh, it's, it's just, uh, L1 spam like that is actually pretty deadly. Uh, and if you get caught in its weapon art, which is this, that, I've seen that take off, uh, three-fourths of a person's health bar up at the 100 plus level mark. So, that could be pretty deadly if you're good enough with it. Uh, personally, I don't think I'm good enough with uh, with fist weapons. I know that they got a buff in the recent patch, so I'll just have to test it out to see. Um, then, moving on, we have the bow in the game. This is a great bow. Uh, as you can see, it's actually using the uh, arrows that you get in the DLC as well. Sadly, though, the arrows don't explode. I, I would have kind of liked that if the arrows explode. So, yeah, that's what it looks like. Not, not too bad. Uh, it's mostly just physical appearance of how you like the look. Moving on, we have the Pyromancer's Parting Flame, something that I actually can't use because it requires intelligence as well. Uh, as you can see, a bit more of a flame, let me put my normal Pyromancer's flame on. As you can see, a bit more of a flame. Uh, it's meant to be used in the offhand. And that will do something, that's the weapon art. Uh, of the... let's just see what this ability is. Okay, so it's Parting Flame. Uh, I actually don't know what that does, um, and I don't have the weapon stats to actually be able to use it. So, the final one is the Follower's Torch. Uh, there's good and bad about this. Uh, the good part is, is it actually can be used as a decent weapon. And that's the, uh, the weapon art is the actual, like, sh shooting flames, so... Who knows, there might be a competitive torch meta. Uh, I doubt it, but... It, this is a more offensive torch than the last one. So... Yeah, that's... Oh, wait, wait. I almost forgot about the, uh, armor sets. Uh, now I do have most of the follower set. I just don't have the follower, uh, shoes. So, it looks like a pretty normal, uh, pretty normal armor set of how... This is a more realistic looking armor set. And we don't really come to, uh, to this game for the realistic stuff. So let's put on the Slave Knight armor. Because I do have all of that. Okay, so I do like the Slave Knight armor quite a bit. Uh, the only thing is, I don't like how far down the hood goes, and I don't like uh, that the back of the legs are exposed. But besides that, it looks pretty decent. I like the way that the chest piece looks with all the ornate stuff on, and how the actual leg guards look. Uh, moving on to the next one. Wilhelms. I actually... I like Wilhelms quite a bit. Uh, I just wish that there was uh, a little bit more there. It's just a little bit small for me. Uh, but 
Overall, the armor doesn't look that bad. I just like mine to look a bit more beefy. Um, I do like that it's a more realistic approach, though. Uh, and that's the same for pretty much all the armor in this game. Uh, or this DLC. Uh, moving on, we have the Milkwood armor set. This is the big guys. Uh, they actually have a decent one. Uh, that thing, their crest on their, uh, on the cloth on their back is actually, it reminds me of Gondor for some reason. Kind of, cause it's kind of like the tree of Gondor. Uh, but, eh. It also has a bit of the stuff with the antlers on the head. Uh, I actually quite like the way that this looks. It's kind of like a, a Viking style look if you're going for something like that, but uh, yeah, I actually kind of like it. And then moving on, we have the uh, the final piece. Uh, doesn't have any uh, gauntlets, but this is the or I already showed this off. This is the ordain set, or the uh, yeah the ordain set that Lady Frayed is using. And I showed this off in the last video. It's just a uh, basic dress. Uh, same problem I have with all the dresses. They normally don't have anything for the hands. And uh, they don't wear any shoes. So... Uh. But besides that, pretty decent looking dress. You can get it tangled up on itself. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, next one will have... To uh, completely to do with the arena that we get uh, which I still haven't visited yet uh, I can actually I can show off that I haven't even burned the thing yet because I'm going to do that at the beginning of that video uh, so yeah that's going to be it for this video remember I'm Ryden from Blue Woody Gaming and I got most of my guys stuff back on let me just Okay, there we go. Now we can end this off like normal. Uh, so, as I said once before, I'm running from Blue to Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one.